State-of-the-art robotic kitting solutions require lots of prior knowledge like 3D models and hard-coded rules. Any parameter change usually involves tedious and time-consuming retuning, which hinders their adaptability to new tasks. Can we develop assembly algorithms that can immediately generalize to new objects? In this work, we show that it's possible to learn generalizable assembly algorithms by framing the problem as one of shape matching. Here is a demonstration of our system in action. It learns to use visual and geometric cues to establish correspondences between objects and their target placement locations. Because what it learns is a general matching function, our system is capable of tackling novel tasks at zero additional cost. We call our resulting real-world system form to fit and it learns effective pick-and-play strategies that achieve over 94% average assembly accuracy on novel kit configurations and 86% success on completely new objects and kits. Form to fit is based on two key ideas. One, it learns geometric correspondences between object surfaces and their target placement locations using self-supervised dense visual correspondence training. Second, the data collection pipeline is entirely self-supervised, obtaining training data for assembly by disassembling completed kits through trial and error with pick and place, then rewinding the action sequences over time. Using a calibrated 3D camera, our system captures grayscale depth images of the robot workspace and uses 3D point cloud information to produce two grayscale depth height maps, one for the kit and one for the objects. The object height map is fed to a suction module, which is a fully convolutional ResNet to generate pixel-wise predictions of suction success. Here, the suction probability map is visualized as a heat map, where hotter pixels indicate better locations to execute the suction primitive at the 3D surface location of the corresponding pixel. Similarly, the kit height map is fed to a place module to produce pixel-wise predictions of placing success. The 3D locations of the pixels with higher confidence serve as better locations for the suction gripper to approach from a top-down angle to place the object. In parallel, the kit height map is rotated 20 times and fed to the matching module, which embeds it into a descriptor space of size 64. It also ingests the object height map and embeds it into that same descriptor space. Each pixel in the kit height map maps to 20 kit descriptors, one for each rotation, but only one of them, the most similar, will match to its corresponding object descriptor. The index of the rotation with the most similar kit descriptor informs a change in object orientation between the picking and placing locations. In this way, the matching module associates each suction location on the object to a picking location in the kit and simultaneously infers a change in object orientation between both points. Finally, the planner is responsible for integrating information from all three modules and producing the final assembly parameters. Specifically, top pick candidates are sampled from the suction heat map and top place candidates are sampled across all 20 rotations of the place heat map. Then, for each pick and place pair in the product of candidates, kit and object descriptors are indexed and their L2 distance is evaluated, after which the pair with the lowest L2 distance across all rotations and all candidates is chosen to produce the final kit descriptor, object descriptor, and rotation index. To generate the inputs and ground truth labels needed to train our various networks, we create a self-resetting closed-loop system wherein the robot continuously disassembles the kit, then performs it in reverse to reset the system to its initial state. To do so, the suction network first predicts a suction location inside the kit which is executed by the suction primitive to grasp the object. If the grasp is successful, the robot randomly places and orients the object on the work surface. Otherwise, it tries the next best suction location. The suction network is trained through trial and error, and the kit is taped to the table to ease the learning and prevent accidental displacements. By storing all the parameters and images generated during the disassembly process, we can generate the ground truth labels for every module. For the placing network, we use the suction location P and the height map taken after the suction action as a training pair. The training data for the suction network consists of two sets of input label pairs, the kit height map and the suction position P, and the object height map and the place position Q. Finally, to label the correspondences for the matching network, we first compute the mass of the object both inside and outside the kit using the images difference and use the change in end effector rotation to associate every pixel in the cavity of the kit to its corresponding pixel on the object. 
One of the first questions we aimed to answer was whether form to fit would remain accurate and robust across a wide range of rotations and translation of the objects in the kit. To test this, we collected data for various kits in a fixed position and orientation to train a form to fit policy. However, during testing, we expose it to randomly sampled positions and orientations of the kit. We find that our learned policy is able to achieve over 90% assembly accuracy on new and challenging poses as shown here. Next, we study how well our system can generalize to different kit configurations. Specifically, we select the tape and floss kits and train a model on the same single kit dataset. We perform 20 trials of combinations and mixtures of these kits, never seen during training, and find that our system achieves an assembly success rate that exceeds 94%. Finally, we study how well our system can generalize to novel objects and kits. Here, we show that while our system has never before seen the following single and multi-object kits, it is able to successfully assemble them with a rate exceeding 86%. We even find that a trained policy can assemble novel zoo animals that have been held out from the train set. Generally, we observe that frequent modes of failure come from the robot placing objects 180 degrees flipped. To explore what the object descriptors generated by the matching network have learned to encode, we compute and visualize the TSNI embedding of the learned feature descriptors for different kits. Specifically, we reduce the 64 dimensional descriptor vectors to three dimensions for color space visualizations. We observe three things. First, that the descriptors have learned to encode rotation, since the same objects oriented the same way have identical descriptors, and those with different orientations have different descriptors. Second, that they have learned spatial correspondence, since same points on the same oriented objects share similar descriptors. And finally, that they have learned to encode object identity with different zoo animals and fruits exhibiting different colors. For more details, please check out our technical report at the following URL. Thank you for watching.